Hello friends and welcome to this video. We are having the third topic from chapter 8. The chapter titled as Applications of Signal Processing. Whatever the signal processing methodologies we have learned so far in the previous 7 chapters. Associated to these methodologies, we have few of the selected but popular applications from the domain of signal processing. So the first that it was signal detection details we have seen and from the previous topic we have started to understand the spectral analysis for the selected type of the signals. So this is spectral analysis the most important application from the signal processing domain. So for sinusoidal signal that is a kind of periodic type you can say that we have covered with. Now if instead of having the periodic type of the signal the sinusoidal case that we have learned in the previous one if the signal is of random type little bit which is a speech signal here which is also having the two components information and the noise component that we are going to see for the spectral analysis that is why the topic here is analysis of speech signals so let us begin to see what are the details for this kind of analysis of signal <music> So here we start with our topic, the topic titled Analysis of Speech Signals. So basically the analysis of speech signals if it is concerned, the helpful mathematical tool we come to see as STFT that is standing for short term Fourier transform. So for Fourier transform the forward transformation and the reverse transformation that we know. So forward transformation is getting the signal information represented instead from time domain or spatial domain to the frequency domain which is obviously most of the time referred to as Fourier domain because of the popularity of the Fourier tool here. Now this short term Fourier transform the another name windowed Fourier transform which we have already covered in the previous chapter chapter number 7 it was the 15th topic short time Fourier transform we have covered that is used in the analysis of the speech signals since the speech signals are generally of non-stationary type here now here we see the speech signal those can be generated by the extraction of the vocal tract and they are composed of two types of the basic waveforms these waveforms are voiced waveform and unvoiced waveform which are basically the sounds here so let us see here the typical speech signal how it looks this is a person and if he is talking you see such a signal here now the plot of this particular signal is for the amplitude axis to be the vertical axis and the horizontal axis when the time as a parameter is taken here and the measurement of time is there in terms of the milliseconds here you can see the markings from 0, 5, 10, 15 and so on up to 40 here. So now to see what we have discussed on the previous slide you see the signal here at the middle there it is high amplitude level as compared to the other local regions of this particular signal. So in this much of the period you can conclude that the person has not started actually talking. Whereas in this particular portion the person has completed his talking here. In this much of the portion this is what the information that can be recorded when, when this person is talking here. So you can see that there are two components one is the voiced component and another is unvoiced components that is a kind of noise so these little bit of fluctuations that you see in this particular regions are added on the entire signal here so whatever the little bit of fluctuations that you notice here these are caused because of the unvoiced or the unintended noise component here so that is what we have here the speech signal is basically composed of the two types of basic waveforms that is voiced waveform and the unvoiced waveform or the unvoiced 
sound here. Now, we also know that the speech segment over a small time if it is observed, so it can be considered as a stationary signal here. Because of the non-stationarity, we are not directly utilizing Fourier transformation over it, but we are preparing the short time Fourier transformation, which is also called as the windowed Fourier transform. Now the use of windowed Fourier transform, also known as short time Fourier transform mean what? It means the application of the discrete Fourier transform that we have learned to the speech segment for a very short time here. So this can provide the reasonable representation of the frequency domain characteristics of the speech in the limited time interval here. That is why for the speech analysis, it is quite recommended for using the windowed signal for the Fourier analysis. So what we can do, we take the original speech signal, we multiply it with a certain window and whatever the intermediate result we obtain as a multiplication of the window and the original signal that is further fed to processing with discrete Fourier transform in short which is called as short time Fourier transformation or windowed Fourier transformation here. Now while we have application of these mathematical tools the Fourier transformation the length and the shape of the window selected are really very very critical issues here. Now the function of the window in general that is denoted by W of N is basically to have extraction of the portion of the signal for the analysis purpose and also to ensure that the extracted section of the original signal that generally we denote by X of N is approximately stationary in the time span. Now at the end the window length that can in general be denoted by capital R should be small here. Now what is the purpose to have keeping the window length R to be small here? See a decrease into the window length will increase the time resolution property for the mathematical tool that is STFT standing for short time Fourier transform whereas the frequency resolution property of this mathematical tool will increase with an increase in the window length. So therefore a shorter window will provide a wideband spectrogram we can say spectrogram is the plot of the information in the frequency domain whereas the longer window will result into a narrow band spectrogram here. So the use of shorter window will develop a wideband spectrogram providing a better time resolution whereas the longer window will developing a narrow band spectrogram resulting in an improved frequency resolution. So for providing a reasonably good estimate of the changes in the vocal tract and the excitation the wideband spectrogram is preferable here and by this end the window size is selected for approximately close to one of the pitch period. So pitch is with respect to the signal here. Now here we have the brief introduction to the short time Fourier transform that we have already covered in the previous chapter. It was 15th topic from chapter number 7 here. So here with the help of this schematic I will try to show you what exactly is doing. We basically know the formulation of forward as well as reverse Fourier transformation for the discrete time signals to be utilized for processing purpose we call it discrete Fourier transform DFT and the efficient implementation of the DFT for the fast results is the fast Fourier transform generally we refer to with the abbreviation FFT here. So this is the speech signal that is denoted by X of N here and if we focus this much of local portion and that is with the help of the window denoted by a W of N minus L here having this much of span so N is the discrete time parameter representation here so when we have product of the two that means the original signal and 
the windowed signal here. So this product will give us the information which will be stationary over the time localization I can say. So here it is represented as x of n into w of n minus l. When we perform it with the help of fast Fourier transformation, the corresponding result can be plotted here that is shown as with the help of the magnitude plot mod of capital X of k comma l here and here it is the corresponding plot with the help of this information we can find more details so that means it is the spectral analysis for the speech signal here now there are a variety of windows available so depending on the application we can select any of the windows here I have few of the selected options to show with you so here we have the plain rectangular window as we have seen in the previous slide then the use of Hamming window and then the use of Blackman window so the windows are shown in discrete time domain by W of n and if the individual windows are performed with the Fourier transformation the corresponding representation as you see with the mod here these are the magnitude plots so mod of capital W sub x capital N of omega omega being the angular frequency we have all this particular information here and as we know the property of Fourier transformation the multiplication of the two signals in the time domain or spatial domain is nothing but the convolution into the frequency domain whereas convolution into the time domain or spatial domain will be the multiplication of their corresponding Fourier representations here so this way either you are going to make the time domain representation of the windows to be either rectangular Hamming or Blackman or the corresponding Fourier domain representation you can have better analysis of the speech signal at hand so this was our topic analysis of speech signals the third topic from our last chapter chapter 8 here so by the next lecture we shall continue into the same chapter to address one more application of signal processing domain so we carry the spectral analysis in continued as in the second topic we have addressed the spectral analysis of sinusoidal signal in this video we have covered the introduction to spectral analysis of the speech signal next to that it will be the spectral analysis of random signals thank you